The International Press Institute has just concluded the 67th World Congress in Abuja. The Congress focused on press freedom, hate speech, fake news, among several other issues affecting journalism profession in the world, especially in Nigeria. My guest on this week's episode of the program talks about the takeaways from the Congress, which is the first on African soil. Hello there, welcome to Dateline Abuja. I'm Gloria Umezuke. Over 300 journalists from at least 40 countries converged on Abuja, the nation's capital, to discuss issues affecting the profession under the auspices of the International Press Institute. We'll be talking about these issues with the executive director of the Institute in our interview. But first, what are the stories that made headlines within the week in the nation's capital? President Muhammad Buhari is asking Urobo community leaders to persuade and restrain militants from destroying national assets and give peace a chance. He appealed to them to allow the cooperation that existed in the last 16 years under the previous administration to continue, promising to use the nation's resources to improve the living conditions of all in the region. The president was speaking when he received a delegation of Urobo traditional leaders led by the Ohorodi of Olomo Kingdom, His Royal Majesty Dr. Ogbon Ogwoni Ogoro I at the presidential villa. Every group asking for restructuring, they've got their own agenda. And uh, I hope it can be accommodated by the constitution which we are running on. I have noted your representation about the state of poverty your people are living in. As I said, then please persuade and control the so-called militants to please give peace chance to stop sabotaging installations. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshubanju has called for attitudinal change among public servants and the enforcement of sanctions against offenders to improve Nigeria's business environment. Professor Oshubanju gave the advice in Abuja at the expanded Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council meeting tagged Building an Enabling Business Environment, the journey so far. According to the Vice President, the presidency remains committed to putting every mechanism in place to make the business environment work. This journey of uh, uh, building an enabling business environment is perhaps even more a, a, a journey of national transformation because what we're talking about is changing attitudes that have long been entrenched. We're talking about changing mindsets because it's not just about putting in place uh, systems. It is more about changing the way people think. Former Minister of Education and co-convener of the Bring Back Our Girls campaign, Dr. Obi Ezekwesili, embarked on a solo protest to the presidential villa. Dr. Ezekwesili, who was seen carrying a banner with the inscription, in the bloodshed, was protesting against the incessant killings across the country, with the most recent being that of Jas, the Plateau State capital. She was, however, stopped by security personnel attached to the first screening point of the three arms zone leading to the villa. Also, her banner was seized and cameramen were chased away by armed police officers. I refuse to be an accomplice to what's going on in this society now. In this match, I went as far as I could be allowed to the villa to say to the president, Stop the killings. Stop the killings. The Nigeria cannot be a vast canvas for killings of citizens. Stop the blood flow, especially of innocent children. The Lord Mayor of the City of London, Mr. Charles Bowman, has indicated willingness by the UK government to advance bilateral trade 
and strengthen existing ties with Nigeria. Mr. Bowman told State House correspondent after a closed door meeting with the Vice President, Professor Yamir Shubajo, at the presidential villa. The mayor, who led a delegation of business community in London for a three day visit to Nigeria, says the meeting with the Vice President was productive given assurance of greater support from the UK in the promotion of innovation and trade opportunities in Nigeria. And we've just had a very good start of a turn in engaging on those areas where we know that we can build those ties, advance the bilateral trade and investment opportunities across those sectors, infrastructure and many more. What I will often say is that actually what my agenda is all about trade and prosperity. Prosperity builds social cohesion that creates stability that ends up with security. Following the massacre of over 100 people in three local government areas of Plateau State, the Speaker of the House of Representatives have suggested that President Muhammad Buhari may overhaul the country's security apparatus. Honorable Yakubu Dogara gave a hint of the possible reorganization after the National Assembly leadership met with the President in the House. These are very, very sombre moments for, for most of us, a um, situation where people in hundreds are killed and uh, we cannot continue to tolerate this as government because um, whatever it is, we mustn't lose the fight against violence because we can't lose that fight and still keep our civilization. We go to the northeast, you can see the level of devastation caused by Boko Haram. Everything resembling progress from school to hospitals to government institutions, everything has been pulled down. And we don't want a replication of this all over the country and the president has taken enough states these are uh, security issues they're not matters that you can discuss but um, he's told us what he's doing and um, the reorganization that he plans to put in place to ensure that this don't happen the nigeria governors forum is planning to meet the service chiefs over the speed of killings in some parts of the country after meeting behind closed doors that lasted over five hours the chairman of the forum, Governor Abdul Aziz Yari of Zampara State, told journalists that the forum condemns the killings and calls for the prosecution of the perpetrators. According to Governor Yari, the governors commended President Muhammad Buhari and Vice President Yamil Shubanjo for their quick response and visit to Plateau State to sympathize with the people of the state. The forum strongly condemn the recent attack in Plateau State and spared of the insecurity in the country. Members commiserate with the government and people of Plateau State and other states, including the victims who were caught in the transit traveling on and from uh, neighboring, neighboring states. Governors unanimously call for the prosecution of perpetrators of the attack and the resolve to find a quick and common solution to the security crisis in the country. The forum resolved to pay the condola visit to the Plateau State to commiserate with the government and the people of Plateau State. Governors resolved to hold one day, one day meeting with the security chiefs to come up with the holistic solution to the country's security situation. The federal government has dismissed reports that Nigeria has overtaken India as a country with the largest number of extreme poor in 2018. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Okechuku Enalema, at a news conference after the Federal Executive Council meeting, said the report might be based on past data when the country was still in recession, noted an urgent need to create employment. Brookings' extreme poverty projection last week revealed that Nigeria has about 87 million people in extreme poverty overtopping India. When you get reports from Brookings Institute and all these sort of people, you need to look at the context. I mean, somebody may have written a report when we are in recession. There is absolutely no question that there is an urgency to create employment in Nigeria. And it has to be a, a collective responsibility. What I can tell you is that if you complete the things we are doing on infrastructure and you implement these reports we are doing, that's what I mean by a leading indicator. Poverty will go down. There is no magic to it. President Muhammad Buhari has flagged off a national survey to ascertain the prevalence of HIV-AIDS pandemic in the country, as well as the level of impact made by the various intervention programs of government since the last 33 years of the virus in Nigeria. 
Apart from providing the government with accurate data about the prevalence of the virus, the report of the survey is expected to help the government in prioritizing its resources with a view to eradicating new infections and placing all sufferers on treatment. The National AIDS Indicator and Impact Survey will provide the answers needed to comprehensively plan and provide adequate resources. The availability of accurate and reliable HIV data for the country is crucial for planning effective health interventions to arrest the HIV epidemic.